Now we've been looking at the Microtik brand routers and the full series is available absolutely free at cat5.tv slash Microtik. Now that our network is up and running, let's create a guest Wi-Fi SSID. Our guest Wi-Fi will have a throttled connection to the internet and they will not have access to our local resources. So that's network shares, printers, things like that. I want to lock that down. We're going to create a truly isolated Wi-Fi connection to allow guests, friends, customers, or visitors to use our internet connection without risking slowing down our, our connection or uh, without risking the integrity or privacy of our data. Um, so this is going to be a complex um, tutorial today. So what I've done is I've actually documented all of the steps that I'm going to go through at cat5.tv slash microtick so that you can follow along. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier for you. So let's get right into it. I am actually going to be going from those notes because this is truly uh, a sophisticated series that we're getting into right here uh, today, uh, or at least a, a aspect of the series. So I am going to be working on my pine book here and I want to just bring up my laptop. And the screen looks fantastic this week. Look at that. Uh, I've made some improvements here at the studio, so I think you're going to find that things are a lot easier to read now. Thank you for everyone for your patience through this time, because it has been difficult for many broadcasters, but uh, uh, we've made some improvements this week, so thank you for your patience. So the first thing I want to do in WebFig here is I want to go into my wireless security profile. So understand, I don't want those who are going to be accessing my guest Wi-Fi to use the same password as I use on my main Wi-Fi. That's particularly what I don't want to be giving out. So let's do that right now. Let's set up a separate password by clicking on wireless at the left here. And then I'm going to click on security profiles at the top. Now click on add new and, and you'll see default is actually my, my network. So that's the password for my network, uh, the Wi-Fi that I've already set up. And I'm going to click add new and we're just going to call this one guest. Just like that. Um, one note is I want to turn off WPA PSK because WPA, as you know, is very, pardon me, it's very easy to compromise. So we don't want to use WPA. We only want to use WPA2 because WPA2 is much safer as far as somebody being able to uh, hack into your Wi-Fi network. So turn off WPA PSK, leave WPA2 PSK enabled. And then down here, because that is enabled, we need to enter a pre-shared key, aka the password for our network. So I'm going to use dum dum123 for this guest Wi-Fi. So this is only for the guest Wi-Fi. Remember that, okay? Once I've entered my password, I'm going to hit OK. So I haven't actually created a network yet. All I've done is I've created a security profile called guest, and that security profile contains the WPA2 shared key for that guest network. And I notice that my default network is in fact using WPA pre-shared key. So while we're here, let's open that one and let's turn off WPA PSK because I do not want someone hacking into my main network and hit OK. It only took a moment's time for my Pinebook Pro to disconnect from the Wi-Fi and reconnect. The password hasn't changed, simply the encryption algorithm has changed. So now, as you can see on the screen, neither of my Wi-Fi security keys will allow WPA. They only allow WPA2. It's as simple as that. Now jump into our Wi-Fi interfaces. This is where you see my 2 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz networks. And I want to add a new one for my guest Wi-Fi. But I don't have another radio. So what are we going to do? We're going to share the radio with one of my WLANs. So we're not going to add another radio. We don't have to buy an access point or any kind of device. We're just going to use the same Microtik router. So the only caveat of that is that it means that the guest Wi-Fi is going to be sharing the same uh, channel as our Wi-Fi, like our actual uh, Wi-Fi for our network. However, because it's a different network and it's a different um, password, they're not going to be able to access our things. It's just going to be sharing the same um, the same channel. Whether or not that matters, I don't think it does. Uh, all right, let's go add new. And we're going to choose virtual because we are not creating a, a real one. 
Now we're creating a virtual network here on our wireless tab in Wi-Fi interfaces. So let's create a virtual interface. First thing I need to do is always, I mean, give things a name. I'm going to call this one guest dash Wi-Fi. And you'll notice I'm using guest throughout. You might use your last name or your family name or something fun for your guest Wi-Fi. You can do that, but for the sake of making this tutorial universally accessible and easy to follow, I'm using guest because anyone can go through these steps and then retrace and rename things if you want to, uh, but you don't have to do that. So on this network, uh, let's scroll down just a little ways and we're going to see something here called SSID. We know that the SSID for our network is basically what you see when you bring up your phone and you access the Wi-Fi and you see a list of the different networks. So right now I see Cat5TV and Cat5TV-5G and about a billion other Wi-Fi networks around me. But uh, I want to give this one an SSID that designates this the guest Wi-Fi. Now in our case today I'm going to call this uh, SSID simply guest. Again, I'm going to refer back to my comment that we're just making this universally accessible, um, but you can call that whatever you want. This could be, I could call this cat5tv-guest, which would be very appropriate because if there's some other network called guest, because that's pretty generic, uh, that could cause a conflict. But also, um, it just makes it so that when people come into the studio, they can say, oh, well, that's the guest Wi-Fi for cat5tv. Hey, what's the password? Dum dum one two three. Nice and simple, right? But for today's demonstration, we are just going to go with guest. And now the final thing that we need to do, of course, is set our security profile for the Wi-Fi connection. And we're going to change that from default to guest. So that's going to set so that we're using the password dumdum123 as we specified with that security profile. And that's literally all there is to adding the interface. Hit OK. Now, because I am making changes to my Wi-Fi setup, and because my Pinebook Pro is connected to my Wi-Fi right now, remember that Wi-Fi, uh, now the router is not rebooting, my servers and everything, my internet's not going down. However, the Wi-Fi is going to hiccup there because the Wi-Fi uh, transmitter is restarting or, or reloading those configuration settings on its own. So now that that's finished uh, reloading those settings, you'll see now that under wireless Wi-Fi interfaces, I have one called guest Wi-Fi. And that is a virtual interface connecting to uh, my Wi-Fi. So the next thing we need to do is we need to start routing how the traffic is going to flow. And do you get the sense here that, hey, if you, if you follow these steps and if you understand the steps involved in setting up a MicroTik router, um, you can do some really sophisticated stuff. At the top of this demonstration, I did warn that this is going to be kind of complicated. Not that it's hard, it's not difficult, it's not challenging, it's just there are a lot of steps. So go to cat5.tv slash microtech and I've listed those out in a documentation format for you and the entire series is available for you absolutely free. So if you want to follow these steps and you're a little worried about maybe fumbling over something that I've said or maybe I'm moving a little bit too quickly, hey, head over to cat5.tv slash microtech to get yourself set up with those docs. All right, so to create a bridge, I'm going to go over to the left-hand menu and click on Bridge. We can see there's an active bridge already running there, but we want to add a new one for our guest Wi-Fi because we want this to be separate from our main bridge. So I've clicked Add New, and I'm going to give this one a name. You guessed it, Bridge-Guest. Let's keep everything simple. I want you to follow this verbatim, and that's going to help to make sure that everything makes sense in the end. And you can always go back and, uh, and rename things if you feel that you need to. That's literally all we need to do in order to create a bridge. Uh, hit OK. So now, as you can see, we now have a bridge called Bridge Guest sitting there doing absolutely nothing. So we need to actually specify uh, how the ports are going to be assigned. So click on Ports, and we need to actually connect that bridge to our new guest Wi-Fi. So Add New and then change the interface to guest Wi-Fi and the bridge. We don't want that using our main bridge. We want that to go to bridge dash guest and now hit OK. And now you can see right at the bottom there, guest dash Wi-Fi, bridge dash guest, 
all set, ready to go, and waiting for us to finish configuring. So the next thing that we need to do, obviously, we haven't told this guest Wi-Fi, the bridge, what IP block to use. And again, I'm going to back up to when I said I want this network to be separate from my private network. I do not want the guest Wi-Fi on the same IP block. I do not want their IP block to be able to access mine because I have network shares on my server and I don't want them to have access to deleting my files or worse yet. Here we live in a world where someone could connect to your guest Wi-Fi from their Windows laptop and they have ransomware. That ransomware then goes out on the network and looks for network shares and encrypts all your files. So so even though you may have antivirus or you may even have nothing but Linux on your network, because they've connected to your Wi-Fi, they now have access to encrypting all your files with their malware that they have on their laptop. So we're creating a, a network that protects you entirely against that kind of infiltration, as well as the malicious person who would connect to your guest Wi-Fi and try to seek out private information on your network. So we're going to protect you against that. Let's set up an IP block for this uh, guest Wi-Fi. I'm going to go IP and then addresses on the left hand side here. And you can see here that my network is 10.0.0. So my IP addresses are all going to be 10.0.0.1, 2, 3, 4, so on, and counting. So I'm going to create a new IP block by simply clicking Add New. And we're going to make this one a little different. So we're going to go with 10.10.10.1 slash 24. And on the interface, Guess which interface we're going to use here, folks? Bridge-guest. That's the comment field that I was talking about last week that we didn't really see. We don't need that in this case. Um, but you can add comments to anything that you add in WebFig. Hit OK. So now we have a new network here called 10.10.10.1. And it will assign IP, well, we will inevitably when we set up a DHCP server. See, there's lots of steps. Uh, it will assign IP addresses on that. Uh, IP block. So speaking of DHCP server, that's our next step. So we're going to jump over here and under IP, which is already open, already expanded, and we're going to click on DHCP server. And here you can see my current running DHCP server. Uh, but the thing with this is that it's got kind of a weird name out of the box. So I, I, the first thing I want to do is I want to open that and I'm just going to rename this one local. And the reason I want to do that is I want to always remind myself that that DHCP pool is my local network. It has full access to everything on my network. You do not want to assign a guest to that. So by calling it local, it just keeps me a little bit more safe because it stands out as uh, that is definitely my local network. Now let's add a new DHCP server. And you can see that there's all this setup that you can go through, but I want to show you a tool that's going to help make this even easier. So I just brought that up, but cancel, and you can see there's actually a DHCP setup. And that's going to bring up a wizard that is going to make this a lot simpler for us. And this is literally easy breezy. We're going to change the DHCP server interface to bridge-guest. And then watch this. We're going to hit next, next. See, it, it automatically assigned it to the correct uh, network. Next, next. DNS servers, it's just pulling from my router, that's fine. We can change it. We're going to actually change those in a future episode when we set up a pie hole. That's not a bad word. That's actually a device that's going to act as our DNS server in-house and block advertising, block pornography, all that kind of stuff. Click next, 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 next. Next. Just leave everything as is and we're done. Ha hoo! We've got uh, guest one and notice okay well why is it DHCP one well my bridge guest I can see that it's bridge guest but notice it, it I didn't enter a name for it and so now I, I can do the exact same thing I can open that up and call this guest easy peasy right okay so now I'm at the point where I should be able to see the guest Wi-Fi network on my phone. So let's do a quick refresh of Wi-Fi here. And sure enough, there's Cat5 TV, 5 gigahertz, Cat5 TV, and one called Guest. So let's click it. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to bring up an, a local network resource. I'm connected to Cat5 TV. I want you to see 
that I am in fact able to access local resources. So let's just bring up my VirtualBox login. There it is. So once I switch over to the guest Wi-Fi, uh, I'm going to use that as a demonstration to show whether or not we're able to access those resources. So back in my Wi-Fi, let's connect to guest, enter my password from the security profile, dumb, dumb, one, two, three, connect. Obtaining IP address, and we're in. What options do we have here? Let's look at the IP address, 10, see the gateway, 10.10.10.1. .10 .10 all right, so let's, uh, let's look at our browser again, now that I'm connected to that network, and let's try to access PHP VirtualBox. And you'll notice, yes, I am indeed still able to access PHP VirtualBox. I've clicked on the address bar, and I've clicked on the link, and it is loading. And that is simply because I have yet to create a firewall rule to basically and it, trap that Wi-Fi, uh, the guest access, and make it so that it's not allowed to communicate back with my uh, local area network or my Wi-Fi devices on my actual Wi-Fi. So the way that we're going to do that is back on our MicroTik web fig. I'm going to click, uh, I've opened IP, and then we're going to go to Firewall. We've already seen this on previous episodes of cat5.tv slash microtick. You can see I've added a couple of new things since the last time we were here. But what I want to do this time is I want to create a rule to be able to make it so that the Wi-Fi for the guest network is not able to get access to 10.0.0.1 slash 24. I'm going to click on Add New to create a new Firewall rule. And you're going to laugh at how easy this is. You'll notice the chain is defaulting to forward. That is what we want. So leave that as is. And we're going to set the source address. So this is, if the IP address is coming from this, then do this. So watch what I'm going to do here. 10.10.10.0 slash 24. So anyone who is on the guest Wi-Fi IP block is going to fall into this, the source address. Destination address, this is my network, 10.0.0.0 slash 24. If anyone from this network attempts to access this network, what do you want to do? Scroll down. Action, drop. So what we're saying is any source from the guest Wi-Fi IP block trying to access my actual LAN, we are going to drop those packets. I want to point out that this is unidirectional. So there may be cases where you want devices to access your, uh, your um, wireless network but not have access to your internal resources. However, you do want your internal resources to be able to access them. Think about perhaps an IP camera that uses Wi-Fi to connect. Well, you want it to be able to connect to the internet. You want it to be able to um, access the network. And you, from your computer, on your LAN, want to be able to access that camera, but you don't want that camera to have the rights to access your things on your network. It's just an example, but I mean, you can probably think of devices that you'd want to have uh, kind of separate from your network. So that if somebody grabs it, if somebody steals it, let's say you've got a Raspberry Pi sitting in the roof somewhere connected to your Wi-Fi. Well, if someone steals that, you don't want them having access to your network. So putting it on a separate network, but allowing you to be able to connect to it. So we understand that. We're doing this unidirectionally. This is only going to affect the guest Wi-Fi. This is not reducing, it's not eliminating my ability to connect to the devices on the guest Wi-Fi. Let's hit OK. And now we have that route set up. However, you notice it has placed it at the bottom. And we've already talked about this. We want to make sure that our forward rules happen before some of the MicroTik stuff. And I certainly want to make sure that this happens before the rules that I've created uh, if they involve internal infrastructure. I want this one to happen after um, 
this. No, I don't. I want it to happen before this because if they're going to access 10.0.0.17, I want them to do that through the internet, through the port that we've allowed. Uh, so if this was below it, they would actually have access to 10.0.0.17 because it would happen first. Uh, I don't want them to have that. I want them to have to go to studio.category5.tv. So I'm going to drop as the first thing. So now, without having to restart, without having to do anything else, I'm going to bring back up my phone here, which is connected to the guest Wi-Fi. And let's jump back to my browser and let's click on PHP VirtualBox, which you see that progress indicator up at the top? It's hung up now. I mean, I know that I can still see PHP VirtualBox because I've previously loaded it. Let's go home and let's go there again. So uh, 10.0 PHP VirtualBox. Watch this. I've clicked on it. Where is it? It's not working because I am connected to the guest Wi-Fi. This site can't be reached. However, is the internet working? Let's just go category5.tv. Yeah, internet works a treat. Let's try to go back to, uh, oh, wrong IP, 10.0.0.10, uh, .10, which is my VirtualBox server. And let's, because we know that's going to time out, I'm going to change to my Cat5 TV, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. There we go, connected and bring it up and boom, I'm instantly in. So as you can see, we have successfully created a guest Wi-Fi that is separate from our network. They cannot access resources on 10.0.0.1 slash 24. They can't gain access to that from our guest Wi-Fi. We're also going to learn in coming weeks how we can throttle that. I mentioned that, uh, that we're going to be looking at throttling, but we're out of time for this week's segment. Um, so I will move that into a future uh, episode as well. So make sure you watch for that. We're going to learn how to throttle the connection for our guest Wi-Fi to make sure that even you know if I give the kids access to it on their tablets, uh, their friends, and then the friends are down the road downloading videos through my Wi-Fi, I don't want them milking all my bandwidth. So we're going to cover that on a coming show as well. Cat5.tv slash microtick is where you want to go to get the entire series absolutely free. Please post your comments and make sure you subscribe to us at linuxtechshow.com, which is where I'm posting all these as well, which reroutes to our YouTube channel called Linux Tech Show.